Right now, the housing market is going through all sorts of shifts and changes. Some of them big, some of them are small. But another thing that we saw happen this week that we can point to, and most people say this is a small thing, and I agree, because it's a very small change, but it's a change nonetheless, okay? For the first time since March 2021, homes are now selling for less than the asking price. So Redfin keeps track of this data, and they reported that now homes are selling for about 99.8% of the list price. So we can say that's only a fraction of a percentage point. So why are we even talking about this, Michael? Well, because we need to talk about all of the changes that are happening, whether they're big or small. And even though this is a small one right now, this is the first time that home prices have started to sell under asking price on average since March of 2021. So I would say because it's been that long since this has happened, this is what makes it significant. It's not the actual number itself, it's the fact that it's happening for the first time in a long time is what makes it significant. But when we look at the big picture, guys, at the same time, what else is happening is housing inventory is starting to grow at a record pace. At the same time, we have the amount of sales going down and at the same time, we have interest rates hiking up yet again. Now guys, the reason why all this is significant is because all of these small and big changes are happening simultaneously in the housing market. And this all could add up to becoming really large changes in the long run. If you guys can't tell, I'm in a new neighborhood today. I am south of Fifth, which is one of the nicest areas of South Beach. And typically this area is very expensive guys like everything you see around here is basically in the millions of dollars even for these tiny little condos the cheapest thing i saw for sale was like three hundred and forty thousand dollars for a studio and then you want a one bedroom it's like five six hundred thousand minimum around here it's nuts but the nice thing about this location is it's walking distance to pretty much everything straight ahead of me if you keep walking a few more blocks you hit the beach if you go back behind me you hit miami beach marina there's all kinds of restaurants and shops walking distance to here. So it's a very convenient neighborhood and highly desirable and has traditionally been very expensive in Miami Beach. Now I wanna thank one of my subscribers, Robert, for sending me this story where Bank of America now is once again offering loans for zero money down, guys. We're talking mortgage loans here. And these are specifically aimed for people who live in low income and black and Hispanic communities, okay? That's what this program is set up for. And the thing is, Bank of America and Wells Fargo and a lot of big lenders got in trouble during the last housing crash for less than favorable practices towards minorities, let's put it that way. And now they have this program that on the surface looks like it's out there to help people, which Maybe it is, but here's the thing, guys. When you give somebody a 0% down payment loan right now at the height of the housing market, when property values are more vulnerable than ever, this could potentially end up doing more harm than good. Why, you might ask? Well, because they stand to lose the most if prices go down, because these people who get these 0% loans literally have no equity from the start and will take years just to build up any sort of significant amount of equity because they put no money down and most of your mortgage payment in the first 15 years of your 30 year mortgage goes towards interest. So these guys have a long ways to go to build up any sort of significant equity. And while some people might look at this as a good thing to help minorities get into a home, this could be potentially very dangerous. This isn't happening everywhere though. Right now, this program is only available in certain cities like uh, Charlotte, Dallas, Detroit, LA, and Miami. So this is just like a pilot program, I guess you could say, to see how it goes. And the funny thing is, even though that these loans are aimed at uh, black and Hispanic, you don't actually have to be black or Hispanic to, to apply. So there's that. And these loans require no mortgage insurance, so uh, you don't have that extra payment. And there's also no minimum credit score. Sounds pretty familiar, right? Like back in 2008, 
The one good thing I have to say about this is they are using on-time utility and on-time rent payments to qualify people for these loans. And this is something that the real estate industry needed for a long time because they just don't buy things on credit, right? That's always been an issue for people that don't use credit is they can't really build credit. So just because you don't use credit doesn't mean you're a bad person. Maybe you just like you know, paying things in cash and you don't wanna go into debt. Nothing wrong with that but it would be impossible to qualify for a loan in the past. And a few years ago, they came up with programs like this where you can actually qualify based on on-time rent payments, and that's how they're qualifying people for these type of loans. So 0% loans are back, guys, but only if you're black or Hispanic or maybe not. So it just depends on, I guess, if Bank of America decides you're worthy enough to get one of their loans. Another interesting thing right now is most housing experts agree that we're not going to see any type of housing market collapse or a housing market crash like we did back in 2008. And the main points that these guys look to to say this is that, well, the lending criteria is much tighter than it was before. People aren't getting 0% loans or if you have bad credit, well, now they are. So uh, that's happening. But also, um, they say that the fundamentals just aren't there for a crash. The demand for housing is still too high. And even though prices are up and interest rates are up, you know, sales are still healthy, okay? So that's like the counter argument for there to be no housing market crash, okay? But the big caveat here, guys, and all these experts agree on this, is that because the Fed is holding on to $2.7 trillion in mortgage-backed securities, they say, that if they start unloading these mortgage-backed securities like they said they were gonna do, then there won't be a housing market crash. There will be an all-out housing market collapse. That's what these guys are saying. So they're pretty much saying that the only thing preventing an all-out housing market collapse right now is the Fed not delivering on their promise to unload these mortgage-backed securities, which they promised to start doing back in June of this year. So. So far, they have failed to do it to the extent that they said they were going to. By looking at statements like this, we can really see just how much power the Fed has over not only our entire economy, but specifically the housing market. And if they start delivering on this promise, guys, these guys think there's gonna be a housing market collapse. And I think there could be as well. So we'll have to see what they ultimately decide to do. It's just nuts how much power that this institution has, the Federal Reserve, that's not even an official part of our government, something that should be basically abolished after all the mistakes they've made to uh, get us where we're at today with inflation and all the money printing. But yet somehow these guys call all the shots. So that's where we're at right now. Another interesting trend that we saw happen during the run-up of this current housing market over the past couple years is that in 2021, only 7% of the homes sold were sold for sale by owner, which is when you know, you're the owner of the property and you decide not to use a real estate agent, you want to sell the place yourself. Usually people do this because they have enough experience to and they know how to make the transaction happen and you know, get the place sold without a real estate agent and they're trying to save money on the commission. Okay, makes sense. But the reason why this is interesting is because it was so easy to sell a house for the past couple of years that anybody with a pulse could do it essentially. And during the last housing market run up from 2006 data, 12% of the sellers back then were for sale by owners. So almost twice as many people back then decided not to use a realtor as they did this time, which is interesting because when it's this easy to sell, this is typically when sellers say, hey, screw it, you know, I'm gonna make a go of this on my own. I don't need an agent, let me save the money. But funny enough, this time around, way less people decided to do that. So 90% of the sales that happened in 2021 were still represented by a real estate agent. Now, some of the reasons cited for these sellers hiring agents, even in this hot market, are three things. They said, one, they wanted help to price the home competitively. So notice they use the word competitively, not outrageously. So those are the properties that have sold and are still selling, guys. 
when they hire the right real estate agent and they put the right price that gets the place sold, not playing all these listing games like we see sometimes in these walks where they list it low and then raise the price you know, two weeks later and then it's sitting there for six months and it never sells. So that's obviously a horrible strategy and probably the fault of the real estate agent and the owner combined for allowing it to happen. So there's that. The second thing is they want help with marketing to potential buyers. The last thing is negotiating the deal. And I think it's those last two things that really uh, prompt most sellers to hire a real estate agent. Because in my experience, the, the couple things that I've seen is that a lot of sellers or landlords in general don't want to have contact with the buyers or the tenants. They want to be, you know, left on the outside of it just to call the shots and they want to be like behind the gate so to speak and that's where the real estate agent comes in because we're like the soldier we're the first line of defense we're the one out there ultimately making the deal happen okay so that's what a lot of them want and the other thing is you can have all sorts of ideas of what your place is worth but unless you do this every day and you look at property values all the time in your neighborhood, chances are you probably don't have a clue of what you should actually sell your house for because people look at the zestimates and things like that and say, yeah, this is a good price. Let me just go for this, which usually is not that accurate. Check this out, guys. Got a bunch of roosters out here. I can honestly say I've never seen wild roosters like this here in South Beach. I wonder where these guys came from. Interesting. Now, typically I don't shoot videos in South Beach in general, guys, because it's just too busy down here and it gets very noisy. So, you know, I personally don't like watching, you know, outdoor YouTube videos where people's trying to talk and it's just nothing but, you know, noise after noise. It's very annoying. So I'm trying to stay in like the quieter areas here. That's why I'm kind of just going in a circle. So that's usually why I decided to stay on the north side of Miami Beach where it's just quieter in the middle section where uh, you know we have more residential neighborhoods with houses and there's not all this madness going on 24 7 and if you think this is noisy this is one of the quietest areas of my of South Beach so <laughs> that's why I normally don't shoot down here now interestingly enough we can already say that Toronto Canada is already starting to see a housing market crash because right now Home prices have dropped 16% just since March this year. Not even a full year, guys, down 16%. And people have asked me since I've been doing these videos, you know, what do I consider a housing market crash? And I say, well, probably when prices start to dip 20% or more, I think we can start calling that a crash. Now, this isn't quite there. It's not at 20% yet, but 16 is pretty close. So I think it's pretty safe to say that Toronto is on the verge of a housing market crash. And the UK, Canada, and Australia, and New Zealand are definitely primed to see bigger housing market crashes than we're gonna see here in America. And really, I don't think these guys have the ability to get themselves out of it either. So I think they're just gonna have to go through it. It's gonna be a necessary pain that all these countries are gonna have to experience. And there's gonna be good that comes from it, guys, because when housing prices go down, it makes things more affordable for people that have been struggling, and ultimately, that's a good thing. But yes, there's gonna be some pain in between. Now, because I've mentioned rent control in a few of my videos recently, a lot of you have been asking me why I think rent control doesn't work. Well, guys, you don't have to take my opinion or my word for it. There was an excellent article out of Forbes today that pretty much breaks down the simple reasons of why it doesn't work. And I suggest anybody who believes that it does, you go check out this article. It's gonna be linked in the description below for your viewing pleasure. But let's talk about a couple little high level stats of why rent control doesn't work, okay? Right now in the US, there are over 100 cities that have rent control laws. And five of the biggest ones that have them are New York City, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, California, and Washington, D.C. Those are the top five that have rent control laws, guys. And what do all of these top five metros have in common? Well, I'll tell you what they have in common. 
They're also on the top 10 list of the most expensive cities in the United States. And the funny thing is New York City has had rent control laws on the books for over 100 years now, guys. 100 years, yeah, you heard that correctly. So now think about this. New York City is still the most expensive city to live in in the entire country, especially when it comes to rent, essentially. But they've had rent control laws for 100 years and somehow the rent there still costs more than anywhere else. Why would that be? Well, without jumping into too much detail on this, it's because rent control doesn't work. People who are advocates for rent control say, well, it doesn't work because there's not enough rent control. They need to enforce it more, right? There needs to be more rent control units and buildings in the city. But the simplest reason to look at why it doesn't work is it's all the same reasons that ran up the housing market to begin with in the past couple of years. It comes down to supply and demand. So for example, the more units they do put under rent control in a place like New York City, then the less people are gonna end up moving out of those places and they're not gonna be coming up for rent again anytime soon, right? So what does that do? It restricts the supply of available rentals, making the, the ones that are still available more expensive because more people are competing for the same places, much like how we got to these ultra high housing prices, okay? Follow me so far. So how do we get out of this situation where rent costs a fortune? There's only one way, guys, to build more housing, to, be, to have more available units. It is truly the only way. So it's not like I'm personally against rent control. It's just that it's been proven not to work well over 100 years now, as we can see, by using New York City as the prime example. So what do we need? We need more places for rent, guys, because the more options there are to choose from, then prices will fall on their own. That's how it works. It's basic supply and demand, nothing more tricky than that, I promise. So anybody who doesn't believe this, go check out the article for yourself, research rent control in New York City, see for yourself why it hasn't worked, and let me know what you think after that. Now, speaking of rent, guys, if you are a landlord in the UK right now, you could now potentially be looking at jail time really soon if you knowingly rent a unit to a tenant that is not in good working order and most importantly, cannot be heated in the winter time. If, the, if your unit that you're trying to rent does not meet those basic requirements where everything in the unit works and it has working heat especially, then you could be facing six months of prison time if this new law they're trying to pass goes through over there. Right now, there is already a penalty in place for this and the maximum penalty is a 30,000 euro fine and a ban from being able to rent your unit anymore. So there is already a fine for this in place, but apparently people are still trying to slip through the cracks enough to where they're looking at throwing people in jail for not renting somebody a place that works. So honestly, I don't even have an opinion on this, guys. I'm reporting it because I know I have viewers that watch from the UK, and I think this is a very interesting thing that's happening in your country. And I want to just make people aware of this because if you're a tenant and you fall into victim of a landlord doing this to you, you know, you're paying all this money in rent over there and you don't have working heat when it's, you know, 15 degrees outside. Well, now you know that your landlord could potentially be going to prison for this. And if you are a landlord, then you know you need to get your act together before you end up in jail. So I think definitely going into the end of the year, guys, we need to keep our eyes on a couple of key factors in the housing market. Are we going to see sold prices start to drop even further because we've already seen median home prices go down over the past couple weeks. We're now seeing Redfin reporting uh, properties selling under asking price and we're seeing interest rates continue to climb. So I feel like all of the deck is stacked in favor of pushing the housing market down. How far? No one knows, but I just think that things are heading in a downward direction in general. Please share your thoughts on all this. I love hearing from you guys. If you enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining, please subscribe to the channel and check out my next video on the screen right over here, and I'll catch you over in the next one.